Welcome to the Boston Bruins NHL Hockey Show. This is the first show in a series of shows which will be running straight through the playoffs, or as long as the Bruins are alive in the playoffs. So hopefully we'll be sitting right here through the end of May. Feel free to call us tonight at 531-5500 to talk about the Bruins or anything else pertaining to the NHL. My guest tonight is Frank Fielding. Frank, welcome to the show. How you doing, Dave? Uh, glad to be here. Well, Frank, the big question in everybody's mind, is this the year? Well, David, you know, uh, this year the Bruins lead the entire NHL in, in hockey, and uh, I guess when that happens, you expect a little bit more out of them, and I think uh, the fans want to see a winner. They're kind of used to disappointment over the last few years, although they have gotten to the finals. We haven't had the cup for quite a, time, for quite a while. They seem quite hungry this year. They seem like they want it bad. They're hustling out there. Well, they didn't look like that Saturday. <laughs> yeah, well, Saturday, yeah. different story. Okay, let's move on to the weekend results pertaining to the Bruins. Uh, Friday night, big game in Buffalo, which Toronto beat Buffalo 4-3. to three. Kind of a surprise there, but the Bruins will take that. Lost for the Sabres any time. Yeah, sure. Toronto's uh, down in, in the Norris division uh, with Buffalo trying to catch uh, Boston. Um, we thought that Buffalo would beat them, but uh, that wasn't the case. Mm. And a big game uh, last night, too. Uh, Buffalo beating Winnipeg in overtime. Trailing in the third, 3-2. to two, They came back to tie it and win in overtime. Phil Housley scoring the game winner. Two points for Buffalo, so now they trail by five. Oh, I really thought Winnipeg was going to win that game, the way they played against Boston la last week. Uh, Winnipeg's in the middle of their division, and uh, uh, they have a definite playoff spot, but uh, it could be a team to watch for if... Uh, they get uh, into the playoffs and uh, go through some of their opponents in the division. Mm. And another game last night was uh, Montreal all over Quebec in the forum, 8-3. to three. Quebec didn't have a chance. It's too bad Boston uh, can't play with the tenacity that uh, Montreal showed in putting away an opponent when they have a lead and just keep building on it and keep playing. Mm. A funny note in the game last night uh, by one of the announcers for Sports Channel. He said he was driving through Quebec and it was a sign that says Highway 20, and underneath it, somebody had spray painted Quebec Zero, <laughs> which kind of sums up the Quebec Nordique season. Uh, well, they've uh, they have more losses this year than they have last year. It's uh, I tell you, I wouldn't like to be a Quebec fan right now. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, okay, some of the questions I'd like to pop out for the viewers tonight: Who do you choose for seventh player Thursday night against Quebec seventh player award? Who do you choose? And the other question is, if you were on the officiating staff, what rule would you add or change or delete for that matter to make the uh, NHL, you know, better? You know, Frank, going back to seventh player award, who would you pick? Well, a lot of friends and I have uh, had uh, some, not arguments, but uh, we've discussed it quite a bit. And uh, uh, I think if you look at the stats uh, and the people that have won it in the past, uh, I think Greg Hoggard's up for it this year, I would say. Although there are a lot of other candidates. Uh, Gary Galley, for one. Oh, oh, even Bobby Carpenter would be in for a two-way Yeah, Hoggy's been a two-way play. He's been defense, <laughs> He's offense. a utility man. <laughs> um, my pick would be number 31, John Carter. I think since the beginning of the season, he's done nothing but hustle. Nothing but hustle. He's up and down. He, he doesn't give up on the puck. He stops, he starts. He doesn't make that loop. He's, he's in and out of the zone, chasing the puck. He, he'd be my vote. Um, if I had to make a second choice, I, w I would go with Dave Poulin, but he hasn't been around long enough throughout the season to be selected for the seventh player role. But he's another, another hustler out there. How about a uh, rule change? If you have to change a rule or, or add one for that fact. Well, I think uh, the one thing I would look at if I was uh, on the NHL Board of Governors is uh, the icing rule. Uh, in the past, they uh, use it to as a, a delay of game site, so, uh, defenders throw it down the other end of the ice and uh, they create the penalty, or, well not the penalty, but the icing, but uh, nowadays the skaters are a lot quicker and they get down on that puck pretty fast and, and a lot of times when that defender's right on them, uh, I don't think they should call icing in that case, I think they should play it out. Mm. Well like the college when they just crosses the line for icing, I, I think that's, you gotta touch the puck. Yeah, that's true, but uh, they, they say they're trying to speed the game up, and I think if they looked at the icing rule and, you know, had players skating hard for the puck, 
if they didn't blow that whistle, that uh, clock would keep going and the game would move along a lot quicker. Mm. I like that rule they added, the offsides, where you can shoot it in when people are in the zone as long as they get out. I think that sped up the game quite a bit. Yeah, you're right there, Jay, but uh, they could have gone a little bit further than that, I think. Uh, they call a delay offside a few times uh, when the puck has been put into the zone and given the defenders a chance to uh, retreat. Mm. Uh, but in another case, if all the people are in the zone and the puck happens to skip out of the zone and the player's feet are in the zone but the puck is outside the zone, they blow the whistle then instead of letting the defender come out with the puck mm. and maybe circle around and get reorganized. Yeah, this is true. Um, if you want to call and talk about any of these issues, 531-5500 is our phone number. Uh, moving on to the uh, upcoming games. Or well, actually, we could talk about the Kings game Saturday if, <laughs> if we want to talk about <laughs> that mess. Um, real quick, the Kings, 4-1 to in the third. No, fell apart. It was Boston 4-1 to in the third. <laughs> and it was Boston that fell apart. I don't think they more or less fell apart. I think they thought they had the game in the bag and uh, decided to play a defense. They stopped skating. Uh, 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 not a defense, but a uh, prevent type defense, mm. as they do in football. But a lot of times, as you've seen, that doesn't work a lot. You know, they play defense, defense so everybody backs off, yeah. and the team just marches down. I think when they're dumping the puck out of the zone, and the, and the uh, other team just picking up the puck and creating an offense and skating in, I think it would be a lot better for the Bruins if they got the puck, four-check down in the other zone, and play their normal game. Uh, because uh, you know as well as I do, Dave, if uh, you're, you're defending against a play, it's, <laughs> this is you true. don't have to. Uh, <laughs> okay, we got a phone call right now. Hello, welcome to the show. Who's calling? Uh, this is Bill. Bill? Yeah. Bill, how you doing? Hi, Dave. How are you? Oh, hanging in there. Hey, great show. It's about time that we got uh, something like this in on the air that we can call into and talk about the Bruins, one of our favorite subjects. All right. Uh, who do you like the seventh player, Bill? Seventh player? Tough choice. I'll tell you, the first, first month of the uh, season, I was picking Brickley. Then he went down like a brick. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the story with him anyway? When's he going to be back? Uh, I don't. He's got that muscle that, that's uh, turning into bone, and uh, he may never be back. Yeah, so I read into paper today, Bill, that uh, he had uh, he could be out for the rest of the season. That's not good news. No, no it isn't. Uh, seventh player, huh? Boy, that's tough. I guess I probably have to go with uh, Burridge right now if I had to had to pick someone. Yeah, he's playing well. He came back. He showed no signs of a letdown when he came uh, I'll back. I tell you, I was at the game Saturday. Oh really? It, it was great. It was great. Barge, he was the uh, he was the only one that played sixty minutes. Everybody else played uh, forty. Oh yeah, yeah, two periods. Tell me something, Jay Miller. It, has his role changed, or is is he still the same with the Kings as he was with the Bruins? No, no, not nearly. Jay Miller is playing a much better role with the Kings than he did with the Bruins. He went out on the ice a lot as he, as an enforcer, at least as what I saw on Saturday, but. Um, he didn't get into a fight. There was no roughing penalties. There was nothing like that against him. But you can bet when things were when he was out in the ice, things went smooth. Mm. Uh, what do you think the turning point in the third period was that uh, that killed the Bruins? Without a doubt, that ridiculous timeout that Milbury called with about five minutes to go. Yeah, I kind of agree with I that. I have no idea why he called that. He stopped the game, and the Kings got back into it. Yep, that's for sure. Right after that, boom, boom, boom. Goodbye. Yeah, three shots, three goals. How about a rule change? Have you thought about that one at all? What was that again? The rule change. What rule would you add or delete ah. or fix up that would, you know, maybe make the game a little better? Boy, I tell you, I would have to say something like we got to eliminate the two-line offside pass. Maybe, maybe uh, something where the red line is not counted quite as... Uh, in the way it's counted right now. Yeah, the Gretzky would have loved that a few years ago. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that Gretzky needs the uh, red line to do anything that he does. Mm. All right, one other quick question. If you were Harry Sinden, who would you trade for a Mario Lemieux or a Steve Eisenman? Uh, I'd trade Gord Kluzak. Yeah, I, I think that'd be a one-on-one -on -one trade. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> quest, no question about that. <laughs> Uh, so what's the story with Gord? Uh, is he coming back, or is it going to be another lost season for him? I, I don't expect him back. I think the season's already lost for him, Bill, and uh, he may be back for the playoffs, but it could be one or two games. The next hit could be his last game. I think he played quite well when he came back.
but he just he played the back to back games and it's never been the same. All right, Bill. Well, thanks for calling. Okay. Keep watching the show. Bye. Bye. Okay. Okay.